there are two dimensions to performance, and this applies to basically any job. There's skills and there are attitudes. <coughs> skills, pretty obvious, it's the technical aspect. How did you do the job? Did it come out right? Attitude is the way you did that job. Did you do it with a smile on your face? Did you do it when my daughter gets into her car seat? Yeah, maybe. Or did you do it? Uh, uh, I uh, uh, did it. I got in the car seat, but it was painful for everybody. A high performer has both skills and attitude. They have great skills and great attitude. A middle performer, good skills, good attitude. And the classic low performer, lousy skills and lousy attitude. Now, low performers, classic low performers, are actually not that big a problem for managers. Most managers do not struggle dealing with people who are incompetent jerks. Listen, if you're an idiot and you're nasty, it's pretty easy to fire. They usually don't survive the first 90 days. This is not a big problem. Nobody looks at a person and says, well, you know, they're a moron, but at least they're a jerk about it. Let's keep them. Give them a bonus. <laughs> Nobody does that. They're easy. The two more difficult categories, however, are the talented terrors and the bless their hearts. Now, the bless their hearts, even these don't cause that much trouble, but these are the people, they've got great attitude, but their skills are questionable. We used to call these folks the good soup, because like they look good, you know, they're nice enough and everything, but there just wasn't a lot going on underneath it. And then one of our clients uh, is a U.S. attorney, and she's the head of the southern region for the Justice Department. She's out of Birmingham. Her name's Alice Martin. And Alice, I was, I was saying to her, you know, we got to talk about the good suits. And I said, you know, the people that you just want to sort of grab and go, listen, you're nice, but you're just an idiot. You just didn't get it. She said, Mark, that's not what you say. No, you just take him aside and you say, not sweet. Bless your heart. <laughs> Thanks for trying. That was that was just so sweet. And bless your heart. That was thanks for trying. That was so completely wrong. That wasn't even close. But bless your heart. Thanks for trying. And I came to learn, especially when I moved to Atlanta, that yeah, bless your heart basically means you're an idiot. You're a nice idiot. But <laughs> I, I did discover there is a second meeting, of course, the actual, like, hey, thank you meeting, when I, I brought a pie over to uh, an elderly neighbor of ours, and she said, oh, bless your heart. Let me bless my heart. What are you talking about here? I just brought your pie. You, you bless my heart, bless your heart, lady. <laughs> well, we're going to go with the first definition, bless their heart. Now, the talented terrors, and he's a bless their heart. They're, they're not even all that difficult because we feel bad. You know, if you have somebody with a great attitude and lousy skills, you're going to coach them off. You're going to send them to training. You'll find them a job within the organization, something a little lower stress. They're not the big issue. The talented terrors are actually the much bigger problem that we've got to deal with. And the talented terrors are the people that they make, they get up every day, and they make the choice every day to make life difficult for you and everybody else around you. If somebody is a negative, whining, <laughs> martyr-like, sarcastic, ear-sucking, negative backstabber, by the time they're 18, there is a very good chance, and by very good, I mean 99%, that they're going to be that way, not just at 18, they're going to be that way at 28, 38, 48, 58, 68, 78. And they do. <laughs> yes. As the song goes, only the good die young. A compliment sandwich would sound like this. Bob, you're just so smart. You're, you're one of the most talented people I've worked with. And, you know, you're probably the smartest person on this. Um, our coworkers, your coworkers have got some problems with you. You know, pretty critical of them. Say some nasty things. And, you know, I, I just want to resolve this because you're just so smart. I mean, come on, you got all this magical ability. It's just. Just let it out, because I've never met anybody talented like you. If you're Bob, what's the message you just walked away from this conversation with? I'm great. I'm smart. I'm brilliant. I heard, I'm smart. I'm brilliant. Womp, 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 womp. I'm smart. I'm brilliant. 
That's exactly what I just heard. The problem is several fold. Giving the compliment sandwich makes us feel better, doesn't make them feel better. Listen, if their job's on the line for not straightening up, it doesn't do us any good to not receive that, not make sure they receive that message.